Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, the Executive MBA's Disruptive Impact on Your Career Progression. My name is Martina and I will be the moderator of this webinar on behalf of the PREP team. The speakers today are Luca Pascualotto, Rustam Timorshan and Marta Leonardi and they will give you a really valuable information about the program and Luca and Rustam are alumni of the program, so they will give you their personal experience. Marta is head of recruitment and admissions for M EMBA and GMP for ESCP Business School. Please send your questions during the entire event by typing them in the Q&A or chat box, and our speakers will take time to give you an answer at the end of this webinar. Before we start, let's check the sound. Could you please write something in the chat box just to make sure that you can hear as well? Okay, great. I'm giving the floor to you guys. Thanks, Martina. Thanks a lot. Thanks for, of course, to our guest speakers today, Rustam Timurshinu, he's the Execution Director in AINS Russia, and Luca Pasqualotto, the Co-Founder, Vice President, Managing Director of Copernico in Italy. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome to our webinar. Today, um, I would like to talk about uh, the disruptive impact of the Executive MBA in your career life, in your career progression, um, and with our alumni. So um, asking them their direct feedbacks on their personal experience on the executive MBA path and the outcomes they are finding and they found um, during the, the executive MBA. Um, here it's uh, our agenda today. Uh, I would like to give you a couple insights about uh, ECP Business School, uh, giving through together the executive MBA path, uh, interact with our alumni, asking directly uh, their, their opinions and experience on, uh, on the length of the program, for example, on the different tracks. And then of course, uh, a panel with specific questions uh, to let them the stage, to let them deal the stage, um, to, to share their their experience, uh, and of course, as Martina said before, the Q and A session to answer to all your doubt and information you may have regarding the program. So let's start. Uh, first of all, who we are? Who is uh, ECP Business School? is actually the first business school worldwide that was established in 1819 in Paris. And uh, um, doing those like 200 years uh, was able to build uh, six different campuses around Europe. So we do have Berlin, London, Madrid, Turin and Warsaw. And during your executive MBA, you actually have the chance to go through all these campuses to touch base in every, in every market. Um, just to give you some other numbers, uh, in terms of uh, high-level participants in customized trainings and executive education, we count among 5,000 people. And we benefit from uh, an alumni of more than 65 thousand people all around the world, like 150 nationalities. It's important to talk about uh, the ranking and the accreditations, especially uh, later on when we are going to talk about uh, the executive MBA. Um, our master in finance uh, has ranked second worldwide by the Financial Times last year. We are sixth with our master in management seventh worldwide the executive MBA and we are eighth as European business school. We also benefit from all the accreditations that you say below, especially for, for the executive MBA since we were talking about it. Um, more likely is important to to highlight why is a paid business school, why it would be the choice. Um, I would say I, we find that three main assets that are important uh, to talk about it today. The internationality, of course, thanks to the six campuses, we do have an international network, faculty, students, 
and the international programs all around uh, um, the countries. Uh, it's important uh, the business link. So every campus build the business relationship with the market, with the companies. That's allow us to create a strong corporate partnership. We do uh, organize corporate visit and we let participants work on field projects. Uh, at the same time, the professors benefit from a really strong corporate background and uh, international CV. Um, especially in the executive education is really important to have a professor who knows what an executive need in practice um, is not any more like a, a simple academic path, but you, if except for the executive MBA in particular is really important to study on real business case and later on we we're going to see it. Um, the third aspect is uh, the highly practical approach. Uh, we strongly believe in a learning by doing method um, with an highly diversified uh, class uh, that allow you to do that. So uh, work on real business case with a class uh, which is really heterogeneous, really, really um, diversify in order to exchange with, uh, with, with your peers uh, coming from different industries and, and sectors. And that's why, and that's how you learn uh, in more efficient way. Um, I would like to ask Luca if he uh, wants to, to give us his, uh, his experience. Uh, um, which are the strengths in our teaching method? So you experience yourself uh, the, the practical approach that we strongly believe in. Um, tell us a bit more. Yes, thank you, Marta. And hello, everybody. Um, as Ma Marta mentioned, ESCP um, teaching approach is, is quite uh, particular and I liked it a lot because it's uh, really practical and the professors, as Marta mentioned, are um, corporate professionals with a lot of experience, uh, international experience in uh, uh, corporations, in uh, SMEs, uh, and some of them were or are entrepreneurs. And so the contribution uh, given in the classes is really um, of high value. You can learn from people that really did and do things rather than people that only um, wrote and read books that's quite different also what i really appreciated is that um, before the classes uh, there are some cases that are spread through the class you need to study prepare the case and then during the class you discuss the case with the professors and with your peers and doing so, um, the understanding of an issue is much more deep, is much more relevant, at least it was for me. And also after the class, uh, you work uh, with your peers in groups that change for every different class. And you have the chance to experience, to put in practice what you have learned during the class in a very practical way that you can also use uh, the, the same day or the day after in your daily professional life. This is something that I really liked uh, and uh, I hope also Rustam and the other uh, colleagues uh, uh, appreciated that. Thank you so much, Luca. Thanks for mentioning that, uh, exactly. Our goal is to give you all tools uh, to uh, use the skills you got in class to put directly the day after your daily life at work to make it really the, in the most uh, like efficient in efficient way um and here we arrive at our executive mba um, i give you first of all some um, information about the program uh, starting from uh, the ranking which is actually one of the first KPIs that when a person is looking for such a program, so the recognition of the program worldwide. Um, our financial, our, by the Financial Times ranking, our program uh, was ranked last year as seventh worldwide. 
first for career progression with uh, a plus 78 percentage of salary increment uh, is also one of the most international program you can find in the marketplace. Uh, also, we have been ranked as first for uh, aims achieved. So the goals you wanted to achieve before and during starting your executive MBA, as satisfaction, we have been ranked first overall, which is a, um, which is a, a great result. Um, why makes our program unique? Again, the internationality is, of course, one of our main assets. Um, during the program, you have the chance to choose among six international tracks, five international seminars, and of course, the internationality in the class is the most important. And in last class of last year, we reached the 36 nationalities in class. Um, the second one is the flexibility. Um, we do have different part-time formulas on campus or online in virtual. Uh, we have different lands from 18 to 30 months formula. And most of all, you have the chance to postpone a model, reschedule it, uh, uh, really according to your needs, professional needs or timetable. Um, Rastam, would you like to share with us uh, what the flexibility meant in your personal case? Uh, hello, dear guests. Hello, Martha, Luca. Really nice to see you. Um, for sure, the flexibility of the program and uh, school itself is one of the key advantages. Uh, I really appreciate it. This is actually this is one of the reasons why I've chosen ECP because they have such a, uh, a combination. You can choose uh, the opportunity to visit different campuses. You can choose different land. Uh, so my personal situation is uh, um, take, taking into consideration my personal situation. I had to postpone my uh, MBA for one year uh, since June when I uh, started a new position, a new company. So I needed a uh, break because it would be difficult to combine study and work, especially in the first three months. So the school gave me the possibilities. I, I, I got another advantages that I can meet with uh, uh, another stream of, uh, of, of, of uh, next participants. And uh, what I'd like to highlight here as well, so uh, about flexibility that, uh, as we know, uh, 2020 was a really a watershed year for all people and companies and the school quickly adapted to online format. Uh, it's, it wasn't everything perfect at the beginning, but uh, taking feedback from participants, the school changed uh, uh, the, the next model already. And uh, secondly, uh, school for school offered uh, us the opportunity to attend face to face later. And uh, for people who want to continue their education, they offer it uh, completely online models, uh, which stretch it over several weeks. Uh, I, I personally didn't uh, uh, take them, but I've heard that uh, positive reviews from my classmates. And I would like to also mention here that very honest position of the school leadership team when discussing and making decisions regarding this non-standard situation in terms of format of education. I know that uh, some of business schools have uh, uh, an unilaterally switched to online learning format without the possi possibility of subsequently attending courses uh, for those who wish. Thank you so much, Rustam. Um, yeah, we are experiencing uh, uh, really uh, some trouble, uh, trouble years uh, um, in our professional and personal life. So for us, the flexibility, giving the, the highest flexibility in our program was uh, one of our priority. That's why um, when we, we see also later on, uh, we introduced a track which is totally online. So that allow you to do the program like two thirds in online formula. And whenever you want, you can switch in presence and vice versa. So that's meant for us uh, uh, the flexibility. Um, 
yeah, and that's linked to the customization, which is uh, um, our third asset. So you can, as uh, Rassam said, you can choose your length, choose your favorite track and modules, choose which markets to verticalize your network. So uh, choose by the topic, by the market, by the networking, and you can customize your path during the program as well. That's why you can postpone a reschedule whenever you want. That's meant for us, the customization and flexibility. That's also allow you to verticalize some skills that they are looking for, still doing an executive MBA that must be general for, uh, for definition. Um, just a couple of information about the composition of the class. Um, last year, we got 104 participants overall. As said before, more than 36 nationalities with an average age of 38 and 13 years of working experience. That an average, of course. Um, for us, what is important is to create a really heterogeneous class because from the diversity, you can really learn and exchange with peers from different cultures, academic backgrounds uh, and industries. Um, for example, Luca, would you like to, to share with us uh, your experience uh, about uh, the, the diversity in the class you found? What it is, it was actually a real added value in your opinion? Yes, um, as uh, mentioned by Marta, uh, every year there are more than 100 participants to the executive MBA uh, class. And out of these people, um, there's a lot of diversity in terms of uh, uh, gender, background, professional experience, uh, country, culture. So all this brings a lot of value to the class because you can share ideas on general issues, specifically uh, about cases with people that have different backgrounds compared to you. And uh, doing so, I could personally appreciate uh, a lot of uh, uh, insights, lateral thinking, uh, ideas that sometimes could uh, uh, also look, uh, um, how to say, spontaneous. They were spontaneous, and I appreciated that. I give you some examples. Um, many participants are um, working in corporation, are business uh, people, but some of the participants come from completely different backgrounds. In my class, there was a physician, uh, there were some lawyers, uh, an architect. So you have people that uh, don't necessarily come from um, a traditional uh, business environment, and they do the uh, program just to broaden their knowledge. But doing so, they help also people working in a corporate environment, in a business environment, to enrich their knowledge uh, and also to open their minds to different mindsets. Also, talking about uh, the nationalities, you can see from the map that there is a strong uh, majority of participants coming from Western Europe and Eastern Europe. Also, some other come from uh, other parts of the world, but this brings uh, um, a lot of diversity in terms of um, provenience because some other business schools are mainly based in one country. Instead, ESAP has six campuses and uh, a broad geographical presence. And this brings value because you can uh, learn different professional experience and also uh, personal experiences. Also a value that uh, I always mention is that uh, most of the classmates I had are now friends of mine. And when I will have the chance uh, and they will have the chance to come and, and go and visit uh, uh, our countries, uh, the value is much broader than that uh, of only uh, learning uh, notions, you know. So even if now our, how to say, movements are unlikely uh, limited, we can uh, keep in touch, talk with people that are on the other side of the world, uh, on another side of Europe, and you can uh, discuss about uh, professional and personal topics. And for me, this was a great value. 
also in comparison with other schools that are more narrow, more specific for geographical or professional people that come from uh, a, smaller, a smaller group. Thanks so much, Luca. Um, yes, our six campuses give us uh, um, this international exposure uh, because we are able to reach different people from uh, all around the world. So actually, that's absolutely a plus. And uh, with the online track, our willingness is really to um, expand uh, our international uh, uh, borders worldwide. So like also people coming from the Americas or the Asia, which have, because of the, of the program itself, could have problems in come physically to, to the classes. With the online track, we can really solve these issues. So we are expecting to increase the nationalities in class a lot in, in the next future as well. Um, here also just uh, some percentage uh, that tell us the really diverse class that we do have uh, where you don't find really like a specific uh, uh, sectors uh, where our participants are coming from, but of also the percentage uh, talk about uh, the markets in which we are in. Um, yeah, the diverse in class is the asset that we really want to keep it uh, growing. And here we are about the program structure, just to give you some my life uh, on uh, how, how it works, how, what you're going to face. Uh, we have three main pillars. We have nine core courses, 10 electives, five international seminars, and one international consultancy project. Um, starting from the core courses, you do have nine core courses on business administration is actually the fat of the program, which give you um, the structure and help you to uh, folk any uh, business language. So uh, here you really start to work uh, on your managerial uh, skills in a really comprehensive way. Um, we have uh, different uh, tracks that you can choose among the itinerant, Berlin, London, Turin, Paris or various track. So you can decide to have a campus of reference or to do a rotation among all the campuses to, um, to attend the courses. We do have the online track that allow you to take all the nine core courses fully remotely. Um, one other thing is, is that uh, what makes really the difference from also other business school is that you can actually do these core courses as a standalone program and you gain the general management program which is an highly um, program recognized uh, worldwide uh, and then you decide later on to take electives and international seminar in a second time up to five years after your uh, general management programs that uh, is a choice for many executives do for different reasons, flexibility, investment, and so on. Um, if you want to discuss further about these details, uh, later on I will give you my details and, and also in the Q&A session we can go deepening. Uh, the electives, this is the part where you really customize uh, your uh, executive MBA path. Uh, you have to choose from 10 to 12 electives you have a portfolio with more than 50 electives uh, that are delivered among all our campuses. So you're going to decide by which topic you want to follow, which country you want to schedule, want to verticalize, as well as your scheduling, your working scheduling. So depending if there's a time of, of a year, which is you are more busy, or you have uh, the facility to dedicate uh, some modules uh, of your executive MBA. Um, at the same time, if you wish, uh, there are also professional workshops available during the elective weeks, uh, the elective time. 
um, like for example, the uh, public speaking workshop. So, and at the same time, there is a, a person like a coach. So you have a coach session that, um, that a person that help you to choose among all the electives and to structure um, your curriculum. Um, the good thing is that you can postpone or reschedule the elective as much as you want. So if you have an idea of 10 electives you would like to start with, then because of the networking you're going to do, because of maybe the topics you're interested in are going to change during the path, you can remake uh, the choice. The third pillar are the international seminar, which actually give a really global perspective. Uh, during the path, we do have five international seminars. We have Paris in sustainability, is at the induction seminar. We have Bruxelles on European market based uh, on the environment. Uh, then you can choose among Brazil, China, Singapore or India as regional seminar. Uh, Austin, Texas on innovation. And last but not least, Madrid is the closing seminar on soft skills. Uh, during this uh, international seminar, you actually meet people from the executive MBA class of that year. Of course, you're going to network with people that are going to choose your tracks. So you have a class around like 40 people. The electives, since you have a portfolio with more than 50, in class you will meet around like 10, 15 uh, people because they're interested in the market and that topic, that's why. And uh, in the international seminar, you meet really everyone. Uh, during the executive MBA path, uh, you have uh, notices to write, you have uh, um, luckily individual assignment, uh, but everything is based on uh, a team project. Uh, you have this international consultant project, uh, which is a project that you can propose, uh, so the participant can propose themselves, uh, a project coming from the company that you're working for, an idea of startup you may have, or you decide to challenge yourself and uh, to give the possibility to your profile to be chosen to be part of, uh, of a different group. So if you want to, for example, to change industry, if you're going to think to move to another company, that could be also a chance to get in touch with, the, with, different, um, with different companies as well. Um, some people, for example, use uh, this uh, international consultancy project um, to make an agreement with uh, their company to get a sponsorship, for example, because at the end uh, you have five people, five valuable profile working as a little consultancy company for that company with almost like zero cost for for the company who's on the project. So also that could be uh, a tip. And you work, of course, uh, during uh, all, the, all the program to this, uh, to this project together remotely uh, during the electives international seminars. And of course, you have a professor uh, who follows you or have a tutor who follows you during the path for suggestions uh, uh, and, uh, and so on. Um, talking again about the flexibility, of course, uh, we have to mention the length. You, the next intakes are going to be this September 21 and next January 22. Uh, we have uh, different part-time formulas from 18 to 30 months. Uh, if you're going to start in September, for example, you can choose among the 22 or the 30 months formula. In the 22, you anticipate some core courses uh, from September to December 21, and then the rest of core courses, international seminar and electives from January 22 to the graduation in the 23, or the 30 months formula, basically in the first year from September 21 to July 22, for example, you do only the core courses. So for example, if you want to take in Torino, um, the core courses, you know that you have to come once a month for nine months or for 
nine times during the online courses for the first year. Then from January 23, you have the rest, international seminar and electives. And here you also work on your international consultancy uh, project. Um, Rostam, would you like to tell us, you anticipate uh, uh, earlier a bit your, your choice. Um, which length have you chosen and why? Oh, thanks for the question, Marta. I've chosen a 22 months uh, program starting from September. Uh, at that time, it was perfectly fit to my expectation of uh, with uh, workload. So I'm actually agreed with my uh, boss about how I'm going to uh, go through this program. I see already the schedule so I can figure out, okay, to combine my work and study and balance. Uh, but it ended up uh, that I'm postponed a bit. Now I'm, let's say, in the 30 months of the program. And I would like to uh, warn uh, all of you. So please uh, think carefully uh, when you chose, when we choose the length of the program, because it's, uh, it's, one of the challenge actually of, of the program that uh, challenge in what way? So you need to balance all the time between your study, work and family. And before you, uh, you, made a de you make a decision uh, about what, what lens to choose, uh, it's better to at least to talk with your uh, with your boss, with your wife, you know, with your kids. Okay, so how are you gonna uh, figure out everything uh, at the same time. So because the uh, this is the very hard to balance. Uh, you need to do a lot of uh, a lot of assignment. Uh, you need to visit models. So actually, all your spare time, what you have now, will be occupied by studying. And it depends on you how deep you want to uh, go. Uh, so if you want to go, really uh, sacrifice yourself and know as much as you can so please choose the the more length more length if you want to get it quickly but uh, it's it's going to be really hard so choose the uh, the short time for me it was 22 initially was perfect but now if i had the choice i would have chosen 30 months for sure so this is this is my uh, personal opinion Thank you so much, Rustam. Exactly. Um, the, the goal of the program is really to allow you to um, find the right balance uh, for yourself uh, from your uh, professional and personal life and this educational path. Uh, so that's why you have the flexibility to reschedule and, uh, and change the models uh, you, you wish, uh, as well as uh, um, at the end, the length. It's important to choose at the beginning in order to schedule everything uh, in the best way possible, but uh, anything can happen. And, uh, and so you really have the possibility then to even to, to take a, a short break among, the, among your past. Um, here also, um, you will have uh, the different uh, application step and the requirements to apply for our executive MBA. Uh, let's start from the requirements. Uh, um, you, we ask for five years minimum of professional experience, including managerial expertise, uh, good academic and career progression. We require at least a bachelor degree. Uh, of course, we are looking for with people with an international background, uh, leadership potential, and proficiency in English. Um, we do have uh, three different application staff, the application online, the English test and selection interview. Um, the English test, uh, uh, we required uh, or a TOEFL or IELTS uh, certificate we got before applying to the program or we provide an internal English test. The selection interview is one of the most important part of the application steps because you have a motivational interview with two ECP professors. Here are the part of fees and financing your executive MBA in ECP. Uh, first of all, um, we do have different offers through uh, the recruiting year. 
Uh, now you have the chance to benefit from the uh, higher discount, uh, applying online only. So during the first part of the application process, by April 30th, you get the early bird fee. For the executive MBA is 59,900 euros instead of 10K more. And for the general management program, so like the first part of the executive MBA, the nine core courses is 24,000 um, euros instead of 27,000 euros. Uh, there are different ways to financing actually the executive MBA. Um, you can also ask the sponsorship of your company. You can ask for student loan. Um, we do also offer scholarships based on the diversity to uh, enrich the diversity on the class. And you can get a discount on the fee from five to the 20%. Uh, we have six categories on the scholarship, women leader, emerging economies, so the, the markets that are based in emerging economies, on sustainability, on who is an entrepreneur, for small medium enterprises, and for non-profit organization. Um, Rustam, uh, would you like to uh, share with us uh, um, your personal experience in financing uh, the executive MBA, which was your schedule, your plan to, to, to face the investment? Okay, thank you, Marta, for, for the question. Actually, as Marta uh, described, there are many ways uh, you can uh, fund your education. Uh, the very choice, uh, I would go uh, just to ask uh, in the company if there is any program to support uh, um, employees uh, by sending them and paying for them in a certain business school, because sometimes you don't know about that. that there is, it, it can be there. So if not, uh, you can, of course, pay for, from your pocket and uh, apply for, to get a scholarship if you're eligible. My, my personal experience was uh, I, I pay for my education from my pocket. Uh, actually, since I didn't save much money for my studies and the, the decision uh, was made a bit uh, spontaneously, so that was the right moment, I decided, okay, I'm gonna do it right now or, or never. So I, 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 took, I took a loan to secure the down payment, uh, which is, was around 30%, and then began to set aside part of my salary to pay off uh, once a quarter. You, uh, the, the, uh, you, 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 you have to pay uh, these quarterly payments. And I got the early birth discount this is a, a good amount of money to save and spend them in your own way. And I also applied for the scholarship as a, as a coming from emerging economies and the school uh, agreed to, uh, I actually received 10% as a scholarship, which uh, reduced uh, one, one payment for me. So um, this is really uh, a lot of opportunities. Please use them, discover them. And, uh, and one more thing here uh, about flexibility as well. When I decided to postpone my studies, uh, the school also agreed to postpone my payments during my break. So it's also very, uh, really appreciate it. Thanks, Rustam. Yeah, because of the circumstances uh, that we, we faced last year, we thought that we could, I mean, we needed to help as much as possible our participants. So that's why we put in place uh, mm, that option. Um, also, the length is a matter of uh, uh, dilute the financing of the program. If you choose a, a shorter track, uh, um, of course, the installments will be packed uh, closely. Otherwise, if you choose the 30 months formula, you have, for example, up to nine installments to face. So like three fiscal years. So, so the flexibility is in terms of um, the financing. There are really different ways and uh, I will be more than, than happy to answer your questions uh, uh, to the attendees if you have uh, any on this particular matter that actually would uh, ask for an additional webinar just for this topic. Um, executive MBA, what next? Um, it's a path 
uh, that really make a difference uh, on your professional life. And for us, it's really important to keep alive uh, after you get your degree, your networking, and the, uh, the value of the continuous learning. So keep alive the connection among your peers. So when you finish your path, you become an alumni. So you become an alumnus of the Executive MBA and ECP, and you can benefit from exclusive events, webinar with guest speaker, uh, benefit from continuous learning opportunities, short workshop done uh, exclusively for uh, the alumni. Um, Luca, uh, I know you have uh, something to, to exchange with us on, uh, on this matter. Yes, thank you, Marta. The network for the alumni is uh, really strong and uh, again diversified because there is the official alumni association that put in contact all the alumni um, of all different years. So you can find a network of more than 60,000 people. And of course, you can ask for advice. You can just meet them during networking events. Uh, of course, when possible in person. And nowadays, in the last months, many events have been organized online. At least it's a way to keep in touch and also to know other people. And besides that, there are other uh, initiatives that are, in my opinion, really interesting. Uh, for example, I am one of the promoters of um, a task force alumni, when we call it that way, that every year organizes uh, events and uh, value in terms of webinars, in terms of learning experiences for other alumni and students. Uh, also, other moments of gathering uh, are the regatta that uh, every year is uh, held in the Mediterranean. So it's uh, a nice way to, to meet, uh, to uh, meet again with former classmates and to know other people in a social environment in that, <laughs> in that case. And also, there are events organized by the official or spontaneous organization of the SAP network that bring you to speeches with uh, amazing people. To give you an example, last um, autumn, uh, I had the chance to participate to a webinar with uh, one uh, astronaut that uh, ex explained his experience and there was the possibility to, to talk with him. So, the, the nice thing is that in the network, all the events are made only to uh, benefit the network itself. And uh, uh, you can decide uh, never to participate to these um, uh, opportunities, it's a pity, or to be uh, on the other side, and that's my case, to be a proactive member of the network. So the network can expand and get more value and strengths also thanks to the contribution of the 60,000 alumni. So uh, for me, this is one of the best outcome of that experience, also because it's uh, growing uh, constantly. And I am still in touch with uh, some, not of course, uh, all of my classmates. Uh, and uh, we weekly keep in touch uh, and exchange our ideas, business ideas, and with some of them, we are friends, so we talk also about uh, personal things. So this is a great opportunity to go back to the old times of school. Uh, and even if you are 30, 40, 50 years old, you can uh, experience again the atmosphere of being uh, young. You, you, you keep uh, yourself young for um, forever, I would say, with this experience. Thanks so much, Luca. Um, yeah, we would say that uh, um, like the two main uh, important aspects on the executive MBA is developing parallel the competencies on one side and the networking on the others. You cannot separate those two things uh, because one is complementary of the other uh, and especially during um, uh, these, this path uh, enrich your network and really create uh, 
new opportunity for your professional life that you never maybe thought about it uh, or you maybe would never have the chance uh, to, to take in consideration. Um, now is the time for our panel. We're going to make it shortly because we are running out of, uh, of the time. So we try to really uh, make the most important questions that I would like to ask to our um, alumni uh, to share their, their experience. Um, Luca, uh, you again, um, which impact did the Executive MBA have in your career progression, uh, in your life, which benefits uh, you, you gain from this experience? Yes, uh, for, for me, the impact was uh, mainly, I would say, in uh, networking and in soft skills that I developed. Um, because I, through this program, um, I, I've chosen the 30 months program. So it was spread during three years, the two years and a half. And going back, I would have chosen the same because during this period, I could, uh, how to say, strengthen my strengths and uh, also under better understand myself, especially with uh, uh, the elective courses on soft skills. I could understand where I had to improve myself. Uh, of course, the improvement. Uh, uh, is still ongoing, I hope. And so I got uh, self-confidence, uh, consciousness, uh, um, but that's specific to my experience also because I had uh, uh, previous experiences in business. Uh, so I had a bachelor degree in business administration. I worked in business advisory, private equity. I co-founded the company. So in terms of, how to say, hard skills, I already had most of them and so i exploited the, uh, the program to improve soft skills and to work on the networking aspect uh, and also to broaden my horizon in terms of uh, uh, knowing people from other countries of the cultures other uh, professional backgrounds so that is uh, the main value for me and also in my professional in my current professional experience uh, I could uh, say put together all the learnings, put together all the improvements I made. And so I am really satisfied with that. Thank you so much, Luca. Rustam, um, the same question uh, to you. Um, which impact uh, the, the executive MBA in your career progression in your life? As Luca said, <laughs> yeah, I, I would like to highlight here. So uh, from my uh, personal experience, I'm, of course, uh, improved my soft skills, but as well as hard skills. I'm not a financial guy, <laughs> so I may improve my skills in finance for sure. Thanks for, a lot for the Professor Vittorio Deputis and for his uh, expertise and willingness to share that unique experience. And as Luca uh, shared before that, uh, professors are on the same level, so you can uh, easily talk with him, ask for advice, and even now, uh, let's say, keep keep in touch and uh, can uh, ask professor about his opinion, the certain topic, and uh, have a chat about it. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, I also uh, improved, let's say, the uh, vision, a picture of global scale up. Uh, how to scale up the business yeah when you are uh, I, I i've been working in russia all the time so i kind of uh, have a vision okay how to build the business in russia but once you see the global picture you definitely broaden your horizons you started thinking globally so this is a really um, unique uh, experience for me and as as a as well, uh, soft skills, uh, how to work in global teams. Uh, you you learn it from electives. Uh, you, you learn it from uh, teamwork and assignment and so on. And what the impact I already have on my career, uh, it's difficult to accurately connect all the dots. But uh, what is certain is that uh, if I didn't enroll the MBA, I wouldn't find a job at Kraft Heinz. Uh, there is a series of certain events from the first day I 
you know, I felt more confident and everything that was surrounded me in the first two models gave me a clear understanding of what I want uh, from work and life long term as well. Uh, well, uh, as a matter of fact, I changed my job after the nine months of starting the program. <laughs> this is my experience. Thank you so much, uh, Rustam, for, for sharing it. Um, now I would like to ask you like a tricky question, um, which is actually, do you think that uh, the executive MBA make a real difference in the marketplace today? Um, in your personal uh, uh, experience and, and point of view, do you see uh, also working with peers that did the executive MBA a difference uh, um, on that. Luca, what do you think? Yeah, I think that with the increasing uh, competitiveness uh, worldwide and with the uh, globalized world we are living in, uh, having a top class uh, executive MBA uh, like ESP is uh, definitely um, necessary if you want to, um, how to say, to challenge yourself with very uh, demanding, ambitious uh, professional careers, and uh, also together with the title and the ranking of the program that is something objective, you know, uh, also the experience you make, the network you can create, uh, all together with the, how to say, uh, official title make you, uh, by definition, a stronger professional. So if you combine these different elements, uh, uh, I think uh, it's something almost mandatory if you want to bring your professional life uh, to the next level. And uh, then it's up to you to choose uh, which executive MBA you want to do. So we have explained uh, the strengths of this program. Uh, then it's subjective and of course it depends on the career you would like to do so if you want to work in a corporation uh, it's highly uh, recommended uh, if you want to be an entrepreneur uh, to start uh, your business on yourself again it gives you an overall perspective and helps you to be more conscious on what you're going to do so overall i think it's a uh, it's, of course, an investment on you, on your life, uh, in terms of time, money, uh, support from your company, your peers, uh, your family. But uh, it's also something that you can do only in a, in a time frame of your life. So you can wait, but uh, uh, then it, it's uh, better to do it at the right timing. And I leave this to Marta and to the school to suggest uh, everyone, to everyone of you, when is the right timing to do it. Thanks, Luca. Um, I take advantage uh, to ask you one further question. Since you mentioned um, it depends uh, by every single person to find uh, the right business schools that actually adapt uh, to your personal and professional goals. Uh, in your case, uh, how did you choose uh, your executive MBA, so ECP, which were your KPIs in selecting okay. the executive MBA? Yeah, I am based in Milan, Italy, and my job is here, my family is here. So I basically looked at schools that um, allowed me to attend um, to a course that was flexible, and this is a flexible course, as already mentioned by Rustam. And also, I wanted a international top class program, and that was the only one <laughs> available because uh, the, the other that were present locally were maybe very good at the local level, but I wanted to uh, attend uh, the best possible course and program globally also to broaden my network and my knowledge at a global level okay uh, even if i work i work um, mainly in italy i wanted to took the chance to broaden my horizon as rustam did and that was definitely the the best choice to do it also compared to other schools other schools that have very well-known brands and names uh, 
uh, still they have some limits in my opinion because they have only one campus or two three campuses and the SAP has six and also they are less diverse meaning that they are more narrow for specific people but since I wanted to broaden my horizon I think I thought and I think still now that uh, that was the right decision to uh, talk and work and study with people that are different from me. Because otherwise, uh, uh, some programs are not better, not worse, but different. And they are a bit uh, more uh, limited in terms of perspectives. One of the values of SAP is the perspective it gives you. Thank you so much, Luca. Right. Um, Rustam, the question to you, do you think that the executive MBA make a real difference nowadays uh, uh, on, on the marketplace uh, and uh, which were your KPIs in, in uh, choosing your executive MBA? Yeah, um, definitely yes, <laughs> just uh, like uh, particip participants, we joined our session, I was also in situation uh, a couple of years ago and doubted whether I should get involved in this challenge or stay in my comfort zone, uh, persuading uh, myself, oh, that's not worth it. <laughs> because, uh, you know, despite the large of number of graduate with MBA, uh, it, you can, let's say, seem to be lost among, the, among them, but uh, I look at it absolutely differently. So uh, what, what, my, what was my KPI I said actually from the day first, I understand, okay, this is the right place. I'm going to achieve all my KPIs, uh, what I said for myself. So increasing your uh, expertise and confidence, for sure. I'm uh, obtaining the most advances and update knowledge and practices uh, in core areas and electives. You would like to close the gap uh, to strengthen uh, your interesting, uh, your your interest, uh, working in groups or working in international groups, uh, see that uh, that because everyone has different backgrounds. I, I was uh, really astonished when uh, so, okay, for example, there was a discussion about certain um, uh, thing. I, I don't actually remember what we discussed, but. Uh, I was impressed by one of the participants who look at the same thing what I'm looking right now. I think, okay, this is the solution. This is the decision where, where he offered absolutely different way. So that really blew my mind because I've never thought about it this way. So this is the advantages of having this uh, group with different background, with different experience, with, uh, with different area of uh, business. Uh, that was really great one uh, broaden your picture of the world well it's not a secret uh, that uh, the great leaders should have a great vision and anticipate trends so uh, the further you see the more likely you are um, to see opportunities so that's uh, and walking is a king <laughs> uh, here so this is the essential part never miss uh, so take a part in every opportunities you can work with people talk with them uh, uh, less formally and uh, you will learn a lot of interesting things about people about the way they live work and uh, think so th this is a really great experience thank you uh, Rustam so uh, the last question for both of you uh, Luca, uh, what do you wish you have known before you selected uh, where to do your executive MBA? So something that you discovered during the path uh, and you were like saying, oh gosh, if I knew before I was going to do it in that way. You mean something different uh, from what I did? Yeah, something different that, something that you, uh, I don't know, for example, many people, uh, um, didn't know about the importance of choosing the right length. Uh, in your case, uh, you were uh, you got the right choice. Yeah. Uh, there was something that uh, you didn't know before choosing the executive MBA that you wish you, you 
would know before before doing the path or the time commitment or or other things. Yeah, but maybe I would um, change the a couple of electives. You know, there is a, a broad choice of electives, more than sixty, and then uh, I, I did. Uh, a choice of 10 and maybe out of 10 uh, I would have changed two of them but uh, I mean I, I think it's uh, it's life apart from that uh, all the other things were chosen quite uh, well also because of the support of the school so I, I, I pre-decided many things uh, well I guess and going back I would do the same because I had the same doubts of the auditors, the participant to this webinar. So I was quite open to express my doubts and we, we could find a solution. For example, that the length of the program was an issue, but it was quite easy for me to decide to do the 30 months. And going back, I would have done the same. So in my case, I was quite satisfied with everything. I don't complain, of course, there's a, the, the, the usual thing about the pandemic, but I was really lucky to attend it before it started. So uh, that, that's, that's life. And I hope uh, um, that the new participants uh, will be soon able to enjoy both the web, uh, the online part, and the presence part that is uh, really interesting. Thank you, Luca. Um, just one, one, uh, one last thing. Uh, there is a, a tip or suggestion you would like to share with the auditors uh, that are now looking for the best executive MBA for their career path. A suggestion? Yes, to, to express all the, the doubts you have. Also, we have seen that you wrote some questions, so there is full availability from both the staff and uh, alumni like myself, uh, students like Lusta to provide you with all the support. Also, I had some doubts before, uh, before uh, applying and I was putting in contact with some former, some alumni and they were of great help to me because they, they faced the same issues, the same, uh, as I say, doubts that I had at the time. So it was really, um, comfort to me to uh, to share my doubts with them and to see that we were on the same level again and so i suggest you to express all your doubts be open and don't don't worry and if you are here maybe it's because uh, you want to do it and maybe because it's the right timing to do it thank you so much luca uh first time to you uh, there is anything that you wish uh, do you have known before starting your executive MBA and uh, the last uh, tip to give to our auditors? Actually, uh, what I really uh, want to do differently is uh, to start it and make the decision earlier. <laughs> Don't postpone your decision. So, you know, uh, time flies. Uh, it, it's never been the right moment for uh, for education as people say not the right moment for the baby yeah that, that's a challenge so just accept it go through it and you will find a way how to figure out uh, how to figure out your balance between everything and you will benefit for this from this for sure uh what what tips okay please choose the land um, the more land program it gives you more um, uh, uh, more time to go to, to, to learn it more profoundly to have better understanding and uh, I didn't know about GMP program and I see that some of our classmates switched let's say they uh, finished the GMP and then decided to join executive MBA let's say that can be an option I didn't know about that option when I uh, enrolled the program so uh, be aware about this so you can finish your GMP and then switch to executive MBA if you, let's say, want to check everything is okay, not, uh, let's say, invest, uh, uh, not to sign the contract for the executive MBA, like start it from GMP and then decide, everything okay. step by step. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Thank you yeah. so much, uh, Rustam and, and Luca, for uh, really for your time and, and exchange. Uh, we got really relevant insight. Um, now is the time for uh, Q&A session. Martina, would you like to tell us uh, if there are any questions for us? Hello again from me. Thank you so much, guys, for this really interesting information. And yes, we have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, do you provide full scholarship? That's the first question. Um, as I said before, uh, I go back to the slide quickly. Um, we don't provide a full scholarship. We provide scholarship based uh, uh, on different categories uh, from uh, here you can see on, on the screen and the discount can be from five to the 20 percent. Uh, there are sp scholarship application to fill in in order to be selected to win uh, the percentage you are eligible for. Thank you so much for the answer. Another question is uh, what waste most in the admission assessment? Could you share with us? Is the GMAT test, the ESA, the preparation of the interview? Uh, for sure, the selection interview is actually what counts the most, uh, as well as the application online, where you actually go through all your academic backgrounds, international uh, and career progression history. Uh, we don't require any GMAT, uh, any uh, mathological test. We do require the for all the other uh, programs in ECP, not for the executive, because we base our evaluation on the career progression and the value of each professional. So that's why we don't need it for uh, to, to understand if a person can work in team or not. Uh, if uh, and reach that position, it meant that it's a, a valuable person. Thank you so much for the answer. Uh, another question is, do the selection com committees prefer a particular type of background? Do you have a, such information? Uh, we want to create an heterogeneous class. So we, in terms of uh, academic and professional backgrounds, uh, we don't have any preferences, just the preference of uh, uh, great profiles. Uh, so as uh, Luca said uh, before in his class, he had an architect, uh, lawyers, uh, sometimes happen doctors as well. So we don't actually prefer any backgrounds uh, rather than another. Okay, thank you so much for the answer. Um, another question is, I believe that you have shared this with us, but maybe it will be good to repeat it one more time. If I have eight years of work experience, does that put me at a disadvantage when it comes to admission for the program? It really depends by each profile. Uh, that's why it's really important to, to have a one-to-one -one assessment meeting before starting the application online. Uh, for us, it's important to, to follow the candidates closely step-by-step step during the application process. So in the one-to-one -one meeting assessment with, uh, with the recruiter, with me, for example, it's important to highlight your strengths, uh, and your goals, uh, and your prog career progression so far. So it really depends by, by each profile. Thank you so much for the answer. Another question is, uh, what make the program different? Could you share with us the pros of the program? Because I'm trying to determine my preferred format. Um, first of all, the choice, it depends by your KPIs. If you're looking for the most international executive MBA in the market, ECP is, is one of it. If you're looking for the most flexible one, then of course it is our second strength. The customization uh, to, in terms of timing, length, uh, and the, the content you want to deepen in. Also, this is uh, um, a KPI that can, can work for you. It really depends uh, if you want to uh, work, keep working in an international environment. That doesn't mean that you have to uh, forcibly move to another country to work in an international environment, of course. Uh, it really depends by, by everyone's uh, KPI. If you're looking for 
uh, the most recognizable uh, executive MBA, you know that our is seventh worldwide by the Financial Times ranking. So internationality, flexibility, and customization of the program are our main point of differences from uh, the other programs. Thank you so much for this detailed information. Uh, another question is, um, is the program available in all of your campuses? And if not, do you suggest exchange between the campuses? Um, as said, we do have different tracks. So the program is just one. You have the chance to decide where you want to go to study. If you want uh, mainly staying in Italy or in England or in France, or you would like to um, experience uh, all, the, all the life in the different campuses, you can do it as well. So you can really customize it also in, uh, in that sense. So you can stay, you can prefer a place or can really benefit from uh, all the, the five campuses. Thank you so much for the answer. I believe that we have answered all of the questions. Uh, for those of you who want to um, ask something else, you can contact Marta, I guess. Yes, yeah. here is here we are. Her, um, detailed information where you can find her. Uh, before we say goodbye, I would like to ask you um, for your feedback of this session. And I'm launching the poll right now. So please give your feedback to us because it's important. If thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, Martina. And thank you, Rustam and Luca, for uh, their availability in, uh, in taking part of, uh, of our discussion for the insights. Uh, and thank you, of course, to all the attendees who join us uh, today. Thank you so thank much. You. It was my pleasure to have you for this event. It was really interesting and valuable information. Thank you. I hope my that we, we help a so, lot of people. Thanks. Thank uh, thanks. Uh, Marta, thank Martina. Uh, it's, uh, thanks to Luca and all the participants. Uh, that was really interesting. I hope you learned something about it and uh, that will help you to, to make better understanding about uh, the ECP school and better uh, understanding whether you should go or not and how fast like the time is actually is one of the key elements uh, of uh, in our life so please do not postpone your important decision <laughs> to later on so this is my advice i'm i'm, I'm available so you can find uh, and contact me from linkedin please if you have any questions welcome thanks great Krista. Thank you so much. Thank you so much once again. Wish a good luck to all of you who join us today for this webinar uh, on behalf of our prep team. Good luck to all of you and see you soon again, I hope. Have a nice day all. You too, bye.